Hello and welcome to our third video on Big O Notation. In this video we're going to look at a 2017 A2 paper and we're going to look at question 10. So hopefully you remember the four rules that I applied in order to get the Big O Notation. In the first question it says evaluate the efficiency of the algorithm and using Big O Notation determine the growth rate for time performance and this is worth five marks so in step one I said work out the number of loops in step two I said work out the operations that the question asks for and these operations could be anything from addition to subtraction multiplication assignment comparison operators such as greater than or less than number three add up the number of operations that we find and then work out from this the big O notation when we scale the algorithm up. And don't forget the question asks you to determine the growth rate for time performance, which is all about the efficiency of this algorithm running in real time. So the first thing I started doing was working out the loops. I said I will loop n minus 1 times and the reason I can say it's minus 1 is because the first item in your list or your array will already be sorted, hence the n minus 1. Then I looked at my next loop. The j loop here will loop n squared minus 1 times and the reason for this is the n squared comes from the nesting of j which is nested inside the i loop and the minus 1 comes originally from the minus in the i loop. So once I've worked out the loops the second step is to work out the operations and it's important that you read the question here because some questions would specify which operations or calculations you would be looking for. I've noticed I have two operations in the I loop itself. Now it's important here to look at the indentation of the code itself. It's not very clear to see that swap smallest with x bracket start bracket and start equals start plus one is actually inside the I loop itself. But because we have two operations and inside that loop the loop runs n minus one times we can say that we have two n minus one. And it's important to point out here that swap smallest with x and start and swap equals start plus 1, they both perform some kind of processing and therefore can be counted as an operation or a calculation with swap swapping the smallest number and start incrementing by 1. The next operation that I'm looking at is inside the J loop. We have a comparison of a less than symbol and therefore there are n squared operations carried out in the j loop. Adding these together we get a total of n squared plus 2 n minus 1 and that was step 3. Step 4 is to work out that n squared will dominate in this equation because the more data we add in n squared will grow faster than any other term making the growth rate for time performance here order of n squared. And that's it for question A. Your marks here will come from identifying the loops and the number of iterations that it will do. It then comes from working out the number of operations that are carried out within those loops, then adding up your total number of operations and then working out the final big O notation. Question 10B expects you to use the same algorithm, but this time determine the growth rate for memory space used by the algorithm. So here it's all about storage. And if you read the question, it says below is part of an algorithm that sorts an array named x that contains n integers where maximum integer is the largest integer that can be stored. Now because the question specifies that we will store an array, that's one array named x and it can store n integers. We don't know how many n is so we have the storage requirement of one array multiplied by n and that's our storage requirement. As n increases the storage requirement will increase by n because if we have one number 
then we'll have to store one number. If we have 10 numbers in our array, we'll have to store 10 numbers. The one array that we have will never increase. We can only ever have one array. The numbers in the array can change and we can hold a lot more numbers. So we can say that over time, if we add more numbers in, that will change and that will dominate this equation as one is a constant. And therefore, this becomes order of n. Hopefully now you can see that I'm applying the same techniques to each of these questions to get the correct answers. My advice here is that you read the question and understand what is being asked of you. If you're still stuck, you can go back and watch the videos again or you can ask me in the comments below. And that's it for another computer science video and I'll see you again very soon.